So I have Dr. Brink here today and he helps heal people in many ways. I've been a, I call myself like a movement therapist. You know, I'm a Cairo by, by trade um, for 18 years. Yeah, 18 years, 19 years in December. Oh, so, wow. yeah, so it's been a whirlwind. It's been fun, you know, been able to sort of travel the world with some athletes and stuff and get them to the Olympics and, wow. you know, do that. So super fun doing, you know, that type of stuff. How does alcohol impact the recovery and overall physical health? Huge topic. Um, I mean, obviously the part of like, if you want to get into protein synthesis, you know, like how does your body actually recover? You know, so if we're drinking one glass, two glasses, three glasses, you know, in an evening, your body's ability to try and actually recover gets less and less and less. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if we think now, because we have stressors of our life, Oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to have a glass of wine. I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to, whatever it is. Right. But yet I'm going to go and I want to do CrossFit. I want to do X sport. It doesn't make a difference. Right. But I'm just going to have that one glass. That one glass is now going to be potentially down the road. It's not like you see it tomorrow. Right. But down the road, because it's that cumulative effort that your body can now not recover the way it's supposed to do. And then we just think it's part of the process. I mean, you can go to college, look at mm -hmm. athletes in college, right. And could their performance be better, you know, and, but you look at professional athletes, you know, today and they're on such a high end regimen, you know, as to what they do do, what they put in their body. And if they are to drink, it's probably going to be more of an off season or if they celebrate by winning the world series, that's what's going on right now, or, you know, something to that effect, you yeah. know, but there, there are a lot that again, just abstain from it because they know what it does to their body and they want to make sure that their bodies are like the most pristine thing that's out there. And because that's, what's making them those, you know, millions of dollars. Even occasional drinking can cause problems. Oh, hundred percent. Like, you know, I wear, if people are familiar with wearables, right? There's like the aura ring, like I wear a whoop, you know, you know, band. And I've done just on my own studies, you know, to where like, if I have just, let's say one glass of wine, my resting heart rate is typically about 46 at it, you know, okay. each night. So when I'm sleeping and I know if I have just one glass, right, my heart rate would be at least about 50. So mm -hmm. just between having one glass of, let's just say wine, right? It doesn't make a difference what it is, but whatever that one drink is, my heart rate will be in the fifties. If I have two, it's minimum 55. Anything above that, like my resting heart rate during the day is sitting right between 60 and 65, right? So my resting heart rate is now what I'm supposed to be doing at night when my body's supposed to recovering or be recovering, right? Yeah. And that's all the sugars now that are in your system that your body's now having to burn, Right. So is your body able to now recover from what you did to it, you know, or now is it just continually just burning the sugars off? Right. You know, and now your body can't recover, you know, and so if it can't recover, you know, what's going to happen to your next day of training. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is when you start seeing, you know, athletes and, you know, just weekend warriors, they start digging holes, you know, because yeah. then they can't climb out of it. Right. Because they're like, but I don't understand. Like, well, if you don't look at like metrics, Right. And just going how I feel. Well, yeah. I mean, you're using a depressant, you know, in the evening time just to calm your brain, but yet your brain might be calm, but you're still not sleeping. So your body's not recovering. If not recovering, you're just digging a deeper hole. Exactly. And people think that, oh, I can sleep longer the next night, oh you know, gosh. and I can, I can sleep more and I made up for the night before. No, you don't make up sleep, you know, sleep is either you've got it or you don't, yeah. you know, you don't say, well, last night I slept for six and tomorrow I'm gonna sleep for 12. So I made the difference up. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> because you are big into the CrossFit world, right? Uh, so well, I've been around it from a company that I helped start, you know, years ago. So we've been around it from coming from, you know, the Santa Cruz, San Jose area. So, you know, working with a lot of like UFC fighters who went over and trained with Greg Glassman, you know, at the very beginning, you know, mm -hmm. so seeing it from its onset to where it's been right now and just sort of watching the evolution of what CrossFit has done. And now where I think CrossFit should be a sport. Yeah. you know, and, or its own sport, you know, to where, Hey, you want to do CrossFit, then go be the athlete for the sport. If you just want to do, you know, some of the stuff, then come over here, but don't sit there and look at that person that's across the board. Cause you're just going to dig yourself another hole. Yeah. yeah. So you've trained several like pro athletes yep. and what is their, um, what is their relationship with alcohol? Like it depends like across the board, Again, I've dealt with UFC fighters to NFL players to, you know, uh, Major League Soccer to NHL, you know. And so a lot of it is their relationship is, am I in season, mm -hmm. right? 
have they had something bad with it in the past? You know, and again, a lot of them are like, nope, we're, we're done. Fighters are, are a little bit different because they're on a, it's like an evolutionary scale, meaning like they have like an eight to 12 week sort of, you know, fight camp. And then who knows how long they're off after that. Right. So during that eight to 12 weeks, they may just abstain completely from it. Right. But then once the season or once they fight, then they made, again, depends on what their body is. Some of the guys are like, nope, I don't, I won't drink a thing, you know? No. And others are like, no, I'm going to go out and I'm going to party, you know? But again, you still watch then how long does it take for them to get back to their sort of their training style, you yeah. know? And again, I think a lot of it, uh, again, yeah, a lot of it is the alcohol related part outside of the other nutritional aspects. Well, so. and then like they come in, they have an injury and have you seen a difference between people that don't drink and drink like in their recovery pro uh, yeah, like that's, progress? It's that's hard because as an athlete, a lot of the time their diet is super dialed, mm -hmm. right? And so since the diet is dialed, then the alcohol is a component, you know, of it. But if you took, let's say just a weekend warrior and their diet was like, ah, eh, you know, and then they're also drinking, then yes, you will see the recovery process take a lot longer, right? Because of that, you know, so dealing with the elite style athlete is a little bit different because they have so many facets of their life that are already dialed in. Alcohol is just a component of it, but it's not like a, this is running my life, you know, mm -hmm. sort of thing. I think something that you could let we touch on right now is like, you look at the dehydration part of athletes. Yes. Dehydration. Right? So, you know, when athletes are, again, right, let's go to Spartan racing, right? So I used to treat a lot of like professional Spartan athletes and these guys are out, I mean, running, whether it's summer outside, it's winter, it doesn't make a difference, but if they're going to go out and now drink, now it becomes that diuretic, right? So yeah. now there's a lot more of that fluid loss that they now are thinking, well, I'm drinking a lot of water, but then I'm going to go have a few beers in the evening time or whatever their drink of choice might be, you know, and then they wonder why their bodies are so depleted, you know, come the next day. It's like, you just created your own, you know, diuretic living environment and you're not looking at that as, you know, as a potential reason for it because like, well, I'm drinking fluid, thus I should be hydrated, yep. right? And they don't look at that. I mean, I see that now just in the winter. Yeah. I mean, how many people just stop drinking, you know, uh, just water, yeah. you know, in the winter time because, oh, it's too cold outside. Oh you know, I don't want to yeah. drink cold water because it's cold outside. Like, well, well, your body could care less. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I think a lot is. of people don't realize that alcohol is a- Dehydrates. Dehydrates. Yep. Um, because, I mean, I was always drinking water constantly. Yep. And I would probably deplete myself every single night. Right, right. <laughs> and then wake up and chug water and then just redo it all again. And I mean, I always told people, I'm like, I could probably be on a stage if I actually dialed in my nutrition and gave up alcohol because I was working out so much, but I wasn't getting anywhere because I right. was just drinking my life away, I guess. But you also look at it in terms of those that do stop drinking that might have been like overweight you know, mm -hmm. before, and then how much weight do they lose? A lot. Right. They use a lot because what have they been doing the entire time, right? They're just throwing in these empty calories into their system all the yeah. time, but they don't look at it as empty calories. You know, a glass of wine has between what, three and 400 well, you know, and calories. Then some so. of us use, well, I mean, I used to look at wine way differently. It's sure. an antioxidant. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's got grapes <laughs> it's, in it. It's We're good. good for my heart. But <laughs> right. I mean, there's no studies showing that any of that is true. Right. But I mean, I would definitely partake in a lot of red wine during wintertime. Yeah. And then I'd wake up in the morning and train and I'm like, oh, I don't know how I did that to myself. Yeah. But the weight loss definitely, um, and being ath like into, you know, athletes and elite athletes, yeah. like it's definitely a huge thing when it, alcohol is a huge thing when it comes to weight loss and strength training, I think. I mean, look at the physique world, like you just mentioned, right? So I've treated tons of physique and professional bodybuilders and stuff as well. And I mean, that is the one thing that they will like stay away from, you know, a hundred percent, you know, it's like, I don't want any of that stuff because I want my system to be chiseled. Yeah. But then the day after, what are they doing? eating like a table full of food, you know, Burgers, all the worst fries, foods you can't right. Yeah. You know, we're just putting garbage in our system. I couldn't imagine know? how that feels after being so clean for so long and then yeah. eating like that right after a show. Yep. That but I, I think that's a, that's like a great test for people to be like, okay, yeah, don't drink for X time and then just go and go on a bender mm -hmm. and tell me how you feel. Yeah. Right. It's like, well, that's what your system is doing. You just did it on such a grand scale. 
you know, that now you can actually see what your system does on a day in and day out basis. You just become, you know, you just adapted to it. Yeah. And so and as your body adapts, then what, is, what are you going to do? Right. You just keep doing it. Well, it's like these people that don't drink during the week and they try to control their drinking and then come the weekend they bench drink. Yeah. And then, so what is that doing to their yeah, right. like workout process? Yeah. I mean, college no. kids. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. That's there. Yeah. So whether you're an athlete or just staying active, what are some key tips for recovery and building physical resilience? Uh, sleep is key. Like you got to sleep. And you alcohol know. doesn't help you sleep. It does not. No. It may, it may shut your eyes. Yes. <laughs> right. But you're not actually getting good quality sleep. You know, so if you're getting that good quality sleep, this is where your body you're hitting your REM cycle, right? You're getting into where your body actually can recover. You're getting to the point to where you wake up and you do feel refreshed versus you wake up and your body's like, man, it feels like I've been just working for the past eight hours. Yeah. You know, and again, that's the hangover, right? You Ugh. know, so having that, having that hangover effect is totally going to affect what you do during the day. I mean, think about how many times, you know, you having an audience, right? You have that hangover, right? And how apt are you to want to go out and actually work hard? Whether that's you work out hard, I want to go for a crazy run. Yeah. I want to go swim. I want to go do, you name it. You know, your body's like, no. And yeah. you're like taking your jet and you're like pulling <laughs> yourself to have to go do something. <laughs> I mean, sleep is the number one under underrated, yeah. underrated thing for anything. Right. I mean, everybody, you see it all over the internet and like so many studies. And then when I quit drinking, that was the number one thing that I noticed that sleep got better. And then a lot of my followers say the same thing. Like my sleep got better. Sure. I'm like, yeah, cause we pass out. Like, right. We're not actually like getting good sleep. No. And that's again, that's why I track it. Right. And it's been cool just over the years just to be able to track. Right. And just see what those numbers mm -hmm. are and just know, okay, yes, I had a drink on this day right here. And yep. You know, that's what that was. Oh my gosh. I was in the red. I like, I felt like I was dead. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. okay, that's not a good feeling. I want to be in the green. Right. Cause there's, and here there's three things. There's, there's green, there's yellow and there's red. Mm. Right. And then red is like, yeah, your body didn't do what it's supposed to do. You can check your heart rate. You can check your HRV. You can check all these different, you know, uh, systems that your body was going through. And it's like, if you look at the metrics and you actually use the metrics for you, then you can start going, I'm going to make better choices. Right. And if I'm going to make a better choice, right. Then that choice is like, oh, wow, I can see the numbers that will actually fluctuate. Yeah. Now there's times that, you know, this will say, Hey, you're in the red, but I just know cause I can't shut my brain off. You know, my brain's <laughs> constantly going all the time. I think that's so, a business owner. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Constant. Yeah. It's like four o'clock in the morning. My brain's just, it's going, there's a, there's a hamster in there and it's rolling. <laughs> so, and then at that time, might as well just wake up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a big one for, uh, for recovery also is the inflammatory response, you know, on your body. Right. So if you do have some degree of, of injury that's now that's happening, it's how is alcohol now affecting that inflammatory response that your body is now supposed to be healing at nighttime? Cause inflammation is normal, right? We mm -hmm. want inflammation in our body when we have an injury, we just don't want excess, right? Yeah. So now if your system is working overtime and now we're going to throw one drink, two drinks, three drinks down, whatever it might be, and then go back to the drinks. Also look at the colors, Right. You know, from a clear liquid to like a whiskey that has, you know, more golden colors or a wine. Right. You know, that's that's got the colors in it. So those colors also have different issues that can oh. have more of an inflammatory response, you know, as well. So I you start you start looking at, well, look at like a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. They don't say you cannot drink alcohol. Right. What they're going to say is you need to have a clear you know, form of it, a gin, a vodka. Right. Because that has the least amount of like calories that are now in there. Versus something that has more colors that might have, you know, whatever those colors may be doing inside the system, you know, but yeah, those colors are going to have more of an effect, you know, Holy crap, on I a didn't... cascade of inflammation, you know, going through your body and, you know, that type of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then you working with people's bodies, like inf inflammation is a huge oh, yeah. thing because they come in like, oh, my back hurts, oh, my hip hurts, oh, right. my leg hurts, my shoulder. And then like, are they causing it themselves? <laughs> We, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, it doesn't mean that they don't have a problem. Yeah. But if you have a higher rate of inflammation in your system and it's putting pressures on other parts of the body that they may not even be aware of, right? And then now we go back to their movement capabilities. And if they're lacking a way of movement and they're adding more stress to their system, 
right now we have an internal stress. We have an external stress. We have those two stressors that are working against how the body is supposed to work, right? But we think, oh, I'm going to go have a drink or two, right? And that's going to sort of numb what I feel, right? And then you wake yeah. up the next day and your body is is worse. So and it's not worse because, well, we just had the drink. It's because everything is now working against you. That's just not helping you. Yeah. I remember my body used to hurt a lot. And then I think it my back probably around the one year mark is when it finally stopped like aching all the time. Yeah. Like it would ache and it was just like, I would feel worse after I drank and it would be like in all my joints and same with Jonathan. He like, he had to quit drinking cause it's fibromyalgia also. But I mean, it's just, it, it attacks you. Right. It's crazy. I mean, think about it. If you have one drink, typically you can control that. And depending on, I think what type of like drinker, you are, well, right? You know, and if, I was the one that couldn't control <laughs> right, it. <laughs> right. So if you now can't control it, think about what your body is doing on a continual basis. Yeah. That's like you going to the gym and just throwing your body around aimlessly around in the gym and expecting it to not hurt the next day. Right. This is sort of what you do on a daily basis. Kids, no kids, whatever the, that life is, you now don't have that sense of control in your system. And so what do you do? Your body's just flailing mm -hmm. and you're expecting it to still have the same control as you did if you were that normal human that didn't drink. Yeah. You know, and so that's why it's like we see these people that act a certain way, I'm like, but you're going to feel that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, yes, your body will take a toll on it. We just numb it, you know, and since you numb it, it's like, well, I don't feel it, you know, until yeah. you do. And then we have more. Numbing. So, that's the biggest word when it comes to drinking alcohol. Yeah. Like we numb everything. Oh, you numb the system. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not just one thing that you're trying to numb. You are numbing the system. So if the system is now not where it should be. Right. You're like, well, I don't feel it. I don't feel anything, yeah. you know, Again, internal, external, whatever, whatever that is for you. Too so. many people that we personally know, like drink their pain away. Oh, for sure. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, they're physical and probably they're yeah. mental, but like physical pain, especially it's like, oh, my back hurts. Oh, my feet hurt. Oh, my like, you know. Yeah. Well, then you're just going to wake up with a headache and hurting even more. Right. Like, I don't understand it. And you always see that with. I always, but I just know personally from, you know, from our family, you know, that people that have never drank before, and then all of a sudden they're in it in a business setting, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have one glass and they have two, and then they have three. And then the next night they do the same thing. And then we're traveling for business over here. And then we do this over here and we, you know, then pretty soon it becomes this cyclical event that now yeah. on a day in a day out basis, and they don't understand, or they don't have, you know, the resources necessary to sort of be like, no, I've either a, I have a problem seek help, you know, for it. And then you just watch it sort of, you know, consume what they do, Viral. you know, right. You know, which is the sad part because then they don't see if they have that problem. Right. And then it's like, now it's, you know, full steam ahead out of control. Right. Yeah. And you're like, all right, well, let's see what's going to happen, you know, and it's typically never anything good. No. I mean, and that's kind of like when I quit drinking, I didn't realize that I, I mean, I wasn't like addicted, I guess, yeah. but I was more I didn't, I had a problem with it. And then I didn't realize I had a problem until I actually like quit drinking. And I was sure. like, Oh, I had a problem with alcohol. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, yeah. It literally spiraled out of control and well, now here we are. Yeah. So you, you talk about like athletes and their ability to play at a high level, you know, and then you will see athletes, whether it's high level, it's collegiate, it's, uh, you know, high school level, you know, cause I mean, that's when kids will start to dabble, you know, that stuff, but you watch their motor skills, you know, uh, definitely be affected, you know, mm -hmm. because of it. And you can tell, I mean, there were many times I know that we'd go out and party and play water polo, right. And the next day you're like trying to swim in the pool and you're like, this is not right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to drown, you know, oh. for sure. You know, but again, in college, you're just like, nope, this is, this is what normal is. You know, let's go yeah. do it again and let's do it again. And um, I mean, that was sort of my thing with like soda, you know, I quit drinking soda like my sophomore year in college and haven't touched a soda and I'm old, you know, 30 something years, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's because it, I noticed that performance part of it, you know, and it's a lot of sugar, right. You know what I mean? You just think about, well, I'm just going to have a big gulp and I'll have another one and another one. And you're like, well, why I'm out here burning calories anyways. And not back, back then I had no clue what I was doing as it was, but now just take that a step further Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's the alcohol component, which now has so many other, you know, problems associated with it versus, you know, just the, the soda part. So you're saying that you can't go consume 300 grams of sugar and then go work it off. I mean, you could, you know, it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, yeah. that like kills me when I see people 
posting, like if you have a high carb meal or drink too much alcohol, just go for a walk and it helps like burn the whatever right. out. And I'm like, that doesn't just don't. <laughs> I, I mean, there you look at that stuff and if someone's going to go out there and do that type of stuff, then there's foods that you definitely want to eat. You know, you need to hydrate, you know, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's key. Go move, you know, how again, you can't tell like what that person is going through. So you don't want to be like, Oh, I want you to go do a high intensity workout right now. It's like, no, I mean, to go move, go for a walk, mm -hmm. get the system moving, you know, make sure you're eating some fatty foods, make sure you're having, you know, more meat or something like that, yeah. you know, make sure you're hydrating like crazy. You so, mean good fats and protein are good for you? Yes. Yeah. Right. The, the good fats, you know, not the, the French fries. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, uh, moving your body. I remember when I first started seeing you, you mentioned, I mentioned something about like people not working out because they were injured or right. something. And then you were like, no, do you still do your daily activities? And I was like, oh my gosh, that was like smack in the forehead because it's so true. Like yeah. we use every excuse that we can not to like move our bodies, but yet we're still doing every like movement. Still do the same movements. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like stuck with me. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's like how I treat people, mm -hmm. right? It's, you will see it and it's very common, especially in our society here that you go to the gym, you deadlift, you hurt your back deadlifting, you go see your general practitioner, the general practitioner tells you stop deadlifting, right? Yeah. And you say, okay, or you now create a fear avoidance, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm never going to deadlift again because my doctor told me not to. Well, then I tell people, then don't bend over and grab your shoes. Don't brush your teeth, right? Don't get anything or don't do the dishes, you yeah. know, cause you're doing modified deadlifts. Same thing with squat, right? So a lot of time, what I really try and educate people on is the movement itself is not going to hurt you. You hurt you cause you can't do the movement, right? And if yeah. you can't perform the movement, but yet you're asking your system to go do deadlift, right? Again, unless it's, com it's just stupidity on your part where you're like, I'm going to lift heavier than that person next to me is. That's just dumb oh, on your part. I, I know you know these two guys that are in the gym <laughs> together sometimes and they like to do that with each other. And then I went with them one time and I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, you guys are going to hurt yourselves. Yeah. Well, and, and, they get, and they probably already are hurt, you know, yeah. but they just, they put on this persona of, nope, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to lift as heavy as I can because that's what I'm going to go do. Cause that's going to make me stronger. Yeah. You know? Like just because you you think that you can lift fifty pounds in your biceps, right. but if you're swinging them, it's yeah. not. No. that's not lifting no. them. No. That's swinging yeah. them. Oh my gosh, I, I could go on and on and on. Yeah, I, but like you know, I obviously like started seeing you, and then my doctor was like, "Well, no, you probably shouldn't be doing that," and I was like, "But that's like I don't want to not do those, right?" Because I mean, I understand like I have to modify, but at the same time, I don't want to like completely stop doing deadlifts and squats just because I have an injury. I and mean, what am I supposed to do? Sit on the couch? Well, sitting on the couch hurts too. No, right. <laughs> and that's typically what we're going to tell you. Oh, go home and rest for six weeks. Yeah. You know, okay, well, I had a hangover. Go rest for six weeks. Oh my God. You know, I bumped my head. Go rest for six weeks. Yeah. Don't do anything. You know, I mean, you can, you can take a lot of this stuff and you can mix and match however that you want to see it, you know, mm -hmm until I think that light goes on, you know, for people, then they recognize going, oh, it really is me that I have to try and fix, yeah. right? Versus going, okay, I need to go out and look at all this other fluff, you know? And then, yeah, there's a lot of fluff that's out there. I mean, my profession is notorious for it, you know? Yeah. So they give nothing but fluff, you know? And so- It's like a Band-Aid, they, you know- Not even a Band-Aid, <laughs> you know? It's just like, here, come in, we're gonna put a Band-Aid on today and I'm gonna take it off in two days. You know, because I want to see you three times a week for the next infinity years, you know, yeah. and we're just going to keep doing the same treatment and we're going to call it health, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, that's not health, that's dependency, you know, and yeah. so that's doing nothing for your health, you I know. I mean, it's a good business strategy. A hundred percent it is, <laughs> right? You know, it's so. like, yeah, keep your pockets good, but I'm like, you're just deceiving the public is what you're doing. Yeah. And then no different in, I think, the physical therapy world. Right. You know, physical therapy is no different because you walk in and you have a knee problem and they give you a PDF that says, here, do these six stretches or these little, you know, quad exercises and then go see the PT assistant over here, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, but who did you build that PDF for? Yeah. If you just pulled it out of a, a bin and you gave it to me, that means you didn't, you assessed me over here for insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you gave me this flyer based on some other human that you assessed a long time ago. It says, these are the six best stretches and exercises for me to do. 
go ahead and go do these, your knee pain will go away. This is why I stopped going. <laughs> well, that's why a lot of people stopped going. <laughs> I you was know? like, I can look these up online. I don't yeah. need to pay every single time to come no. see you just because that's the solution to the problem. Right. I don't, I mean, I could stretch more. I yeah. mean, everybody could stretch more. Well, sure. But if you think, I'm, it's funny, I'm writing an article on like why stretching is no good right now. You know, and it's not that stretching is no good, but what's the point of it? Yeah. Right. If you think you have to stretch, then my question is, is why? Mm-hmm. Is is you stretching going to prevent you from doing a movement that you're asking yourself to do? Mm-hmm. Or is it the movement itself? Yeah. Right. Because I hear it all the time. I pulled my hamstring. We were just talking about, you know, Tom, a second ago, right? Yeah. You know, I pulled my hamstrings. I didn't stretch enough. Well, you stretched your other hamstring just the same. So why didn't you pull that one at the same time? Yeah. Right. Because if you didn't even stretch that one, then okay, I might see that, right? But if you didn't do that, then why did you pull that hamstring, Mm -hmm. right? What was the mechanism that led you down this road to be like, okay, now my hamstring, I just yanked it or any other body part for that matter. Yeah, It doesn't make a difference. So we just think, oh, I need to be bendy. For what reason? Are you going to be a dancer, gymnast? (laughs) Perfect. Then yes, you need to be bendy, (laughs) right? If you can be a normal human, then how often are you really bending over to touch your toes? And is that a goal of yours? If it is, perfect. Then let's work on it. And it's high not school, a goal. Who cares? Well, that's because we had to do the stupid <laughs> presidential, you know, award thing, which is stupid in itself. You know, oh my <laughs> must you do a toe touch, do some push ups and some pull ups, and then we'll call it good. Exactly. You know, you're you're a good human because you can do you whatever many of those. Right? You know. So Shoot. yeah, that's dumb. So the biggest thing that I love about you is you are a doctor of chiropractic, but you don't necessarily believe. In chiropractic oh, itself. God, no. Yeah, no. Can you explain that? <laughs> yeah, I think my my path was I was going to dental school and then decided didn't want to do that, right? And didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something in healthcare. I taught high school for four years. I worked on golf courses for two years, you know. Uh, then once I got into school, I was always questioning everything. So me and another, you know, like three other friends. So we took all these different courses together, but we just questioned and questioned and questioned, you know, all the time. So now once we get out, it's like they want you to abide by a certain model, you know, and this model is repeat visits for, again, the rest of your life. Like, but I saw a problem with that, you know, at the first clinic I was with, right? And they would, people would come in and we'd do the same protocol every single time. Come in, lay down, stick some heat on them, bake them for 10 or 15 minutes, right? Stick some muscle stim on their back or whatever the injury spot is. Lay them on the table, stretch them out, maybe do some soft tissue therapy, adjust them, and then out they go, and we see them in two days again. You know, so I just saw these people coming in, and they're just doing the same thing. Well, yeah, the because of insurance back then, you know, yeah. they were just taking insurance, and yeah, it was it was good. It was a good model, but it's not a healthcare model, right? That that doesn't fix the person in front of you. That just like I said earlier, like it creates dependency, and so that dependency now on me or whomever they're seeing, it's like, I I didn't agree with that, you know? And so then I started to change it. I started writing some protocols for low back, for neck, for shoulder, you know, stuff. And I just want to see if you did some degree of exercise, do you get better? And the answer was yes. You know, go figure. Right. And then all of a sudden, once I left then I just dove, you know, headfirst into, all right, what does PT do? Like I told I tore my ACL. So I went to a PT and then I did my own. I wanted to see what they would do for me. And I wanted to see what I did for me. So I had like my own studies going side by side, you know, and which, you know, my recovery was great, you know, just because I was doing stuff on a continual basis versus I'm just doing three sets of 10 and then done. And then I see them and I'm like, Oh, well, I forgot today or I forgot this. I'm like, yeah, your knee doesn't care what day it is. Mm-hmm. It's like, it still doesn't work. Right. So I need things to, you know, to work. So I think creating the longevity part and now, like I do tell people, if I can get you better in one visit, I did my job, right? The chances of that happening are slim, right? Because there's a lot of nuances to, you know, every human that walks through the door. But if I can break your body down and show you how the body is meant to move, right? And how yours isn't moving the way it needs to, or it's moving in excess, right? Mm -hmm. So then if they're moving in excess, those are like the hypermobile people. And if it's not moving how, you know, we want it to, it could be a control issue, you know, and so now we're trying to adapt both of those worlds to be like, okay, we want you to be a, a better human for who you are, not for what this piece of paper says, right? <laughs> right? You know, and there's all these little nuances, you know, that that go into it. So I think for me, that's the fun part because it's always putting puzzle pieces together. At the end of the day, you're the one that's making the puzzle. We're just here guiding you. 
you yeah. know, and just saying, hey, here are steps that you can do. How often are you willing to work on it? That's up to you. I mean, good. Go back to, you know, the big topic, you know, is the alcohol. How much are you willing to work on it? Right? right. If you're only to be like, yeah, I might have a problem, then you're not going to work on it. No. Right? Yeah, I might have back pain. Did it stop you from doing something? Yes. But it'll go away. You know, my pain <laughs> will go away. <laughs> you know, eh, I don't have to drink on a Tuesday night. I'll be good. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Know? So I, I think it's it's funny how the rehab world for sort of what I do and, again, in rehab world for, you know, for alcohol addictions or you know, just having a problem, you know, is – they definitely go, you know, hand in hand, Mm -hmm. you know, on, on that end, which is, which is fun because I do have this conversation about, you know, alcohol consumption and food and water intake and stuff like that quite a bit with people, you know, and I just weave it into how their rehab, you know, goes. And it's not like you have a problem, but it is look at what these things are doing to your body. And if you do consume, right, reduce it and let's watch how your injury, you know, just sort of flourishes, you know, or it gets better so much faster than you did if you didn't. And if yeah. you choose to go back and drink or whatever, that's on you, right? That's your choice. You want to go back to bad behaviors? I'll see you again, yeah. right? Because you just quit doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know? So well, I think it, it, both like alcohol and body, like you have to put the work into it to actually like make it last. Like, yeah, you're right. So many people say, I'm not going to drink on a Tuesday or I'm not going to drink during the week. They're trying to control it. And just like they're trying to like lose weight super quick or Whatever, super Ozempic. quick. And, yeah, exactly. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. gosh. That's, yeah. And so it's like they want all these quick fixes, but they don't realize that, like, it's consistency and, you know, like, hard work. It's so hard. It's, it's definitely time. hard work. When I do those stupid things, yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> cussing at you during oh, that. Yeah. And I'm, like, this hurts so bad. Like, <laughs> And I think that's what a lot of people think is, like, because I do a lot of, like, mobility training, right? And I will tell people, this is going to be the worst thing you've ever done right? It is not fun. You're not going to get sexy abs from it, right? <laughs> You're not going to sit there and be yeah. this superhuman. I'm like, but you will be able to move better, yeah. right? And if you can move better, we're looking for longevity. If you're just looking for a quick fix, then I can fix your pain in two to three visits. Super easy, right? That's, that's easy to do. But if you want your pain to go away and never come back again, because we're going to make your system move better, that's sort of what we're looking for, yeah. right? No different if once someone recognizes going, oh, wow, I drank six out of seven nights, you know, is that a problem, you know? And if they're looking at that going, yes, well then what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Right. Cut it down to five, cut it down to four, cut it down to three, cut it down to, you know, two and then one. It's like, don't just sit there and go cold Turkey. If you can't do that or you don't have that mentality to do it, no different with the mobility training. Like, yes, you should be doing something every single day. You want your system to move better. We have to keep throwing, you know, these adaptational processes into the mix, right? Because your system is always going to be like, screw this, man. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to move over here because this is way too hard. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, it, it's like watching paint dry. It really is, yeah. you know? It's hard. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. So, um, cause you don't do just the normal chiropractic adjustments. You no. literally are mobility and strength training. Yeah. Like I really try and teach people like how to honestly like manipulate your own body. Mm-hmm. Like, as a Cairo myself, I think the last time like I was physically adjusted was probably well over five years ago, you know, mm-hmm. and that's just by me doing my own stuff on a daily basis to be like, yes, I can move my own spine. You know, yeah. I can move my hips. I can move my knees. Right. So I know that what they're supposed to be doing, I can control those areas versus laying on a table and making someone else make some noises out of my back. And the louder the noise, the better your adjustment was. It's like, no, it's just a louder noise. That's all it was. And then you leave you feeling know? good until the next day. Right. I mean, I mean, that was at least in my case. Like, I sure. would go and I'm like, oh, my neck hurts. And then I'd get it cracked. And I say cracked. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, less. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you, you made yeah, noises. Exactly. you did. <laughs> and then I'm like, gosh, I need to go back. And then my husband would always be like, why? He's never been a believer of chiropractic. Yeah. And I've tried. But, um, but then I met you and I was like, oh, there is a whole different world. Right. Like, and that's a lot of people because, I mean when being in the Bay area or was in the Bay area, I would have so many people that would actually come into the office and they hated, they hated what chiropractors had to offer, but they're Mm -hmm. like, my ortho said to come see you. My PT said to come see you. Right. So now we were seeing these people that like just hated our profession, but, and I wasn't doing what our profession was doing. We're giving them alternatives to what, you know, they're doing Mm -hmm. saying, Hey, we can still train you how to manipulate your own spine. You're not going to get the noises that you're expecting to hear from. Right. But we're also going to give you strategies to make your body move better, to actually get your body to feel better. Right. So you don't have that pain. You don't have that dependency 
on whomever it might be to come in and like, again, I call it kick your shin therapy, you know, kick you in the shin and your back pain goes away. You're going to let me kick you in the shin again. <laughs> right. I mean, that's really what our profession does Yeah, and they do it very well three times a week for infinity years, <laughs> you know? So like I tell people all the time, like ask questions. If they don't know, go see someone else. I don't care if you've seen this person for 30 years and you still have neck pain. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so. I would rather feel better my whole entire life and not just like for a week. Right. <laughs> but there's the dependency, yeah. right? Because what are they now doing? The moment I feel my neck pain go down, what do you now think? Oh, I have to go see my Cairo again. Mm -hmm. It's that time. I'm like, well, now you've just built in this, you know, adaptation process as on a weekly basis. I know on Thursday at one o'clock, I have to get my neck adjusted. Yeah. It's definitely a mental thing. For oh, sure. for sure it is. Because like, so is drinking alcohol. Yeah. Right. You know, because some people can actually control it and yeah. others cannot. Right. You know, some people can say, hey, I can have one drink. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just it. It may be another week, two weeks, three weeks, six weeks. And like, I just had a drink because we went out to dinner or whatever it is. Others are like, nope. I'm having one and two and three and four and yes, <laughs> you know, some of us, yeah. <laughs> so again, it goes back to that. I think the ability for you to control your internal, right, and then also control your external, yeah. You know, and so both of those have to go hand in hand. And when they don't, we require some other dependency on something else because we can't control ourselves. And that's what our profession is, I think, notorious for. Very well said. So. Like the, the dependent part, yeah. Because I think. Too many of us do depend on alcohol because that is the only thing that we know. Just like those of us that go to chiropractic, that's the only thing we know. We don't know that there's something other than that because our doctors usually just send us to PT. Right. Because then the PT world didn't like the chiropractors and vice versa. Sure. And then it's like, okay, well, there is something better out there. <laughs> like, yeah. And I mean, I mean, I've loved engaging with you throughout like since I've met you, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, this, that. Like, now I just go to you instead of my actual doctor. <laughs> well, and how often have I asked you to come back in? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, really, it's like, hey, okay, I'll see you next week because we're working on something. But once you start to get better at stuff, I mean, really, how often am I say, hey, I'll see you next week? It's yeah. really now up to you. You know, yeah. I'll reach out and be like, hey, how's this? How's this? How's that? But I'm never saying I need to see you on this date. Yeah. Right? And that's just how I've built my practice over, you know, 18 years. Yeah. Right is hey, I want you to know when you have to come in, not me to tell you when you have to come in. Well, and I think you know? that's the annoying part about going to like a regular like chiropractor office is they're like, well, you can do this plan, this plan, or this plan, and I'm like, do I have to do a plan? I don't right. want to do a plan. Right. Like I just want to come in when I like. Yeah. But that was how I was thinking that it was is I would just come in when I wasn't feeling well, I guess. Yes. Yeah. But that was never. I mean, like I sell, I sell a couple of plans. But my plans technically don't have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. They have an expiration date because we just have to put one on because of our system. But I just had a lady reach out to me uh, on Saturday this past weekend. And she's like, hey, how many visits do I have left? Right? And I'm like, you have X visits left. She goes, okay, perfect. She goes, yeah, I feel amazing. And I'm like, use them as you want. You know, she goes, yeah. but is there an expiration? I said, there is. But if you come in after it, I'll say I'll just extend the expiration date. Yeah. Like, I don't care when you use them because if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you shouldn't have to see me to begin with. Now these are visits that you can just utilize in the future if something was to go wrong, mm -hmm. right? Now you have them sort of saved up and whether it's one, two or three or whatever it might be. But at that point, now you can come back in and you know, I don't have to spend any more money because you've already spent the money on it, right? And now you just come in and use it whenever you feel like using it. Yeah. Well, and I feel like your packages are more broken down like personal training packages because the more you buy, like the less expensive. Right. It gets and obviously that's right. well, and we're different too because we're sixty minute you know treatment times. Yeah, you not know, like ten minutes. Correct. Yeah, and again, <laughs> most of my profession, you know, probably ninety eight percent, you know, yeah. is you know like the rack and crack. You come on in and you know lay on the table. And it's mm -hmm. a conveyor belt system, and we're just gonna adjust everyone the same exact way. We're gonna sit here and say, oh, this feels out. This feels this. This feels whatever. Like you don't feel nothing. No, you're gonna adjust the same way no matter what. You know, and, and then see you in two days. Yes. See you in three days. Right, right, right. Or again, those people that are now on a maintenance plan that just come back in on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Well, kid, what are you maintaining? Oh, he said my spine's out of alignment. You have joints. They're meant to move. Everyone is out of alignment. If that's the case, the moment they get off the table and walk to their car and sit by sliding in on the right hand side, your pelvis is going to be out of whack because your right foot's on the gas, yeah. right? And you're on the you're on the gas and the brake, and you're now moving. So your system's already changed. Go yeah. back in and get adjusted again. 
You know, it's like, it doesn't make sense to me. No, so. I started seeing, when we first moved here, I found one down the road from me. Um, this was in 2019. And I'm pretty sure he like screwed my back up more than it was already <laughs> screwed up. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, I'm done. Cause my mother-in-law had a terrible experience with one back yeah. home in Oregon. And, um, but I just grew up with it. Yeah. That's just what you, you did to feel better. Well, then I think that's if parents did it, right? And then if you did it as a kid, like before I went to Cairo school, I was adjusted one time. That was really, it. and that was because playing water polo, I screwed my back up. The goalie was a, he was a Cairo, right? He said, "Come to the office, let's let's adjust you." I'm like, I have no clue what even what that is, you know. I even had the application to you know the school sitting on my desk for an entire year. Again, I'm like, I had no clue what this profession was. I looked at going to PT school, but where I lived in the Bay Area, it's like in order to do that, I had to go to Fresno. I'm like, oh. I'm not going back to the Central Valley again to go all the way to go to PT school. So yeah, let me go do this chiropractic thing. You know, I'm like, oh, this looks pretty cool. You know, sure. You know, not again, not having really a clue what it was. I just knew I wanted to do something in the healthcare field, and it just now happened to be that. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, let's and rock the boat. Had a built, you've had your, a business in California that you sold, and then you moved yep. up here. Yep. And then, um, very successful business in California. Yeah, we had four offices, up to eleven employees. You know, out there. So. And you have helped quite a few. I mean, your office is filled with like famous. Like jerseys of people and stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty that's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> like who's who's somebody that you'll you were telling me about somebody, but I can't um who's like one of your most like your biggest success success story? It's they're all different because it depends on when I see them. Is it in season, out of season? You know, the one guy I had a conversation with a client yesterday. Well, potential client, you know, and he's like, Oh, I've been in the bodybuilding world. And I said, Oh, so you'd know who like Flex Wheeler is. He goes, Oh, I know. I said, He and I have been friends for 18 years. Like, he and I had back surgery at the same exact oh, time. Wow. Like, I did, you know, his rehab for him, you know, for all of his back surgery. Um, you know, so being in that world with that guy at that caliber, you know, so he just became such a good friend. But then I've become friends with, you know, a bunch of the UFC fighters, you know, Josh Thompson, my super good friends, you know, like, We'll like DM back and forth, like on a daily basis, you know, and he's in, you know, Texas now. And you know who you need to be friends with is the guy that, uh, who's the, the main guy, the owner of UFC. Oh, Dana White. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt he's coming to Idaho. <laughs> but I mean, it's such a cool world to yeah. be in. Yeah. I mean, again, it's a completely different world, Yeah, you know, and you watch, you talk about like dedication to stuff, you know, I mean, these guys are like dedicated, uh, good friend of mine, Kyle Kingsbury, right? He, he would walk around at probably 235 to maybe at the high end 250, right? But he fought at 205. Oh, wow. Right? So, but he, he made it a science, like to when he started actually cutting weight, where a lot of these guys are like losing 10, 15, 20 pounds, like a week to two weeks prior, right? And so all of a sudden their body becomes emaciated and, mm. you know, whatever, because they're depleting everything in their system to be able to weigh X weight when they get on that scale, right? Yeah. But he had built that science. So, I mean, watching him and now where he's at now, you know, again, he now moved out to Texas as well. He's in the Austin area. But just watching, like, the evolutionary, you know, just sort of life of him and, you know, his wife and stuff like that, it's, it, that's been cool to watch. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, what a cool, like, world to be in. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have created programs for people? Yes. And... We create programs for everyone for the most part, right? There's certain baselines that I want everyone to be able to do, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of people at the very beginning will get some of the very same exercises because most of us humans just can't do them, yeah. you know? But it's like, hey, we have to go back to basics. So let's let's own the basics and then let's start working on all the other fluff, you know, that you want to go do. And that's your goal, yeah. you know? Your goal is not my goal, right? Right. So it's like I want to make sure that you can attain whatever that goal is. So, right. yes, building programs for people that becomes sort of the intricate detail where I don't have a PDF for you, right? It's like, no, I want you to do this or, oh, let's modify here. And so, you know, I want people to videotape their entire session because I don't know where we go in those sessions. You know, I might pivot completely left. You know, you may come in and be like, yep, my foot hurts today. Let's do something with the foot, right? Or my hip hurts or my shoulder hurts or whatever. So as we pivot, it's what is your body giving us on that day? And then where do I see these biggest discrepancies? And sometimes it's just a one-off visit, right? Mm -hmm. And that's easy to do. And then we go back to sort of what we might've been working on, you know, in the past, but yes. So building programs for people is important. 
but like I have like non-negotiables, right? These are things I want people working on on a daily basis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of my, I've had a lot of my subscribers ask about like certain like programs and mobility and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, it's nice that there's, you know, people out there that actually like take the time to get down to what is actually hurting people. Right. And I think the hard part, the hard part with something like that is we're looking at these programs and we're hoping these programs are going to fit a hundred percent of the people, mm -hmm. but we know they're not. Oh yeah. You know, I'm on this, the mind pump, like their, their forum and mm -hmm. people ask, had it today, right? They ask, well, so-and-so had a shoulder problem. You know, what do you think I could do? They have a problem when they push or they pull. I'm like, I need a lot more information. I just can't give you movements to do because I've never met this person's shoulder before. Since I don't know what your <laughs> shoulder is, shoulder. right? I can't give you the exact thing that I want to do. Yes, go ahead and go do go to Dr. Google and they're gonna spit out a bunch of information. It may help you, it may not. I don't know. Yeah. You know, so if you're asking specifics, then I need specifics. You know, and then this is sort of where like my online coaching, you know, that I just help train people from all over the world, right? And so mm -hmm. which is the fun part, you know, because yeah. now you get to meet people from all over and it's not just in my office, you know, and they're like, well, how can you adjust someone? I'm like, I can't. But I can give you strategies that still can move your body mm -hmm. and make it to move better for you so you don't have to go seek the help of, you know, whomever it might be. Yeah. So, and that's again where then I meet the person and I can take them through movements that I can just watch, you know, via Zoom or whatever we choose to do. And then, you know, from that point, it's like, yeah, let's build a program for you. And then it's check-in. How's it feeling? One week, two weeks, three weeks, and so forth, you know? Yeah. So, and that's, I think, the evolutionary process of building a proper program for someone Right, is we're adding and we're taking away. Yeah. We're not just saying this is it. You know, and so programs are that way, and that's the easy part, you know. If they cover 70% of the people and you're part of the 70%, perfect. You know. Exactly. If you're the other 30, then we have a problem. You know, and that's where you have to modify. I mean, I think I'm part of the other 30, but <laughs> <laughs> everyone thinks they're the other 30. <laughs> Joking. Um Yeah, so if people want to, you know, sort of reach out. There's a couple different avenues. We have Instagram, you know, which is like the premier spine and sport. Um, I've got my personal one, you know, just uh, dr.justinbrink, you know. Um, Web page is premier spine and sport, you know, as well. And so, you're in Eagle? Uh, yeah, Eagle and uh, in Meridian, you know, here in the Idaho area. So we have an office inside the D1 training facility, and then we have our own, like, brick and mortar in Eagle. Um, and then in the future, hopefully opening up another one.